Вот. Good evening, everyone. Still connecting. Okay, so who's with us? Steven, you with us, huh? Hilton with us. Who's else with Aaron. us? How are you, Steven? Good, good, good. Hilton, Erev Tov, Shavua Tov. Who else with us? Let's see. Is still people connecting? Who's else connecting? Okay, I was a snowic. Morris gonna join us. Good, 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 good. Okay, so who's with us? Is Mark gonna join us now? I'm just admitting, let's see who else connecting. It's taking a long time. I was with us, Mark with us, uh, Morris with us. Good, good, good. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, um, Rob. Good evening. I just, I just, uh, hello, Marky. I missed hello, you yesterday. No, I missed you yesterday. Sorry, um, Rob, I, I, I had a problem. No so, problem. It happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want uh, just to tell everyone that we're starting the show on Shabbos again, live at, uh, at Yeshiva College. And the show usually, now we're doing it at half past five, but obviously in winter it's going to be obviously different time. So it's going to be live at Yeshiva College again. I'm starting live at Yeshiva College again. We're starting on Shabbos first with the Parshat HaShavua. Uh, so this coming week, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to do the show again at Yeshiva College Life again for Parashat Shavua. It's going to be at half past five. Okay, for those of you that want to join us, it's the Parashat Shavua in depth, more in depth than what we study usually. We have Dr. Lez with us. Dr. Lez looks very warm. He's going to give us the news from Israel, and then we're going to start Be'ezrat Hashem the show. Chavod. Dr. Les. Oh, yes. so, Rob, I, hope, I hope you can hear. Can one hear? I can hear you loud and clear. Yes. Okay. So I just came from a shiver of uh, cousin Eptowitzer, uh, who I actually did a video. He was in his 90s. And he was one of the very first Yidden. He was a soldier. He joined the Polish army that uh, went to Medanik. And uh, yeah. he was just next to us. So I just went, was at the home for the shiver. So that's why I'm not uh, I'm not uh, so organized, but uh, it's very special that we managed to uh, managed to see him and do an interview a, a while ago. And uh, Baruch Hashem, we have that. But what's the news here? So very interesting. There's a new government, and what's very interesting, my daughter. Uh, we got a lot of nachas from this. She's the chief of staff for one of the uh, cabinet ministers for uh, Mary Regev. <laughs> and Miri Regev has taken over the trans transport ministry. So what's very interesting, the previous transport ministry was uh, Mirab Mikhaeli, who said that they will open everything up on Shabbos in Tel Aviv. And now that didn't happen, Baruch Hashem. And now we have Miri Regev, who's very traditional, and she keeps, and she... There's a lot of uh, covered for, for Shabbat, and my daughter's her chief of staff. So I think we, we're just very, very happy, and we just hope that this government does well and uh, succeeds. And uh, Baruch Hashem, it's all Mina So we, it's, it's, it's uh, some people are extremely upset because it's uh, more of a right wing government. But you know what? I think there's some really good people there, and Bezrat Hashem. We we just have to go in the right direction. We wish them all to be just much clear. Bezrat Hashem. You got a nafte while he's up there. And also to wish you a great mazel tov to you and for your daughter. Please, God, a lot of nachas, a lot of mazel tov, Doctor Lez. All the best. Thank you for joining us, Doctor Lez. 
Okay, we're going to start the show. I would like to dedicate the show in memory of Esther Kadem Bat Ketia, Mordechai Ben Rahma, Harav Avram Haim Ben Eliezer Yaakov, Tamar Bat Zeava Shulamit Bat Avram Eliezer Yaakov Salomon Ben Parha, Dvor Arut Bat Beila Shosha Blima Bat Mordechai Betzalel, Malka Regina Bat Joya, Keti Gurgia Bat Farha. In health of, I would like to dedicate the show. In health of Leora Bat Miriam Menashe Naji Ben Farha, Harav Avraham Ben Marina Rav Shlomo Yehuda Ben Dalia Rav Moshe Ben Devora, Dvora Bat Esther, Orna Bluma Bat Miriam, Sheina Keila Bat Hana, Mordechai David Ben Lea, Arie Leiv Gershon Ben Shimona Kohen, Shmuel Meir Ben Shosha Blima, Miriam Bat Zelda, Liba Moshe Avram. בן חן אריבה, חיה ציפורה, בת רחל, איילה עדן, בת רבקה, וטובה ליבה, בת רחל. פליז גאד, רפואה שלמה, to all of them. So בעזרת השם, נעשה ונצליח, והשם עלינו ברחמה וירוויח. The subject of the shi'ur is the breast plate stone, that means the precious stone that was on a breast plate of the Kohen Gadol. And I would like to speak, Be'ezrat Hashem, as we announced it on, uh, on a group, that we're going to speak about the remedy, the remedy of the stone on the breastplate. And I'll tell you the main reason that I made this show, because I've been asked a number of times on it, and I made that show in the past. And many people ask me, what is the, how the Jewish religion look at precious stone, James stone, What is uh, the Jewish people' um, opinion on gemstone, crystals, and etc.? So I would like, Be'ezrat Hashem, to explain that through the breaststone. That means the stone that was on the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol. Where is the source for it? First of all, where is the source for all of those stones? We have to understand. So the Torah tells us in Sefer Shmot, Parashat Tetzaveh, chapter 28 verse 17 the Torah tell us about the 12 stone 12 special stone that been brought okay and been engraved and put inside the breast stone of the the breast plate sorry of the Kohen Gadol and the commentary that I'm going to bring tonight it's mainly from Rabenu Behaye Who was Rabbeinu Behai? I first have to explain that was two different Rabbeinu Behai. The first and the famous one, Rabbeinu Behai, it was Rabbeinu Behai Ibn Pakoda. He wrote the famous book, Chovat HaLevavot, Obligation for the Heart. And there is another Rabbeinu Behai that born in the city of Saragossa, both of them, funny enough, born in the city of Saragossa in Spain. The Rabbeinu Behaya that I'm going to bring is Rabbeinu Behaya Ben Asher. He bought in the city of Saragossa around 768 years ago, plus minus. And in his commentary on Sefer Shemot, he bring him all. And listen what he said. And he explained like this, he explained the remedy and the energy of every stone that was in the Hoshen, the effort, that means that's the breastplate, okay? And he said that he saw in a book that called Chochmat Teva, The Wisdom of Nature. That's an ancient book. And he said that it said it, that there is 12 main stone, that they are precious, and they are the main stone to all the other stone that existing today in the world. And that's the introduction of Rabbeinu Behai. And now I'm going to start with a stone to explain about the name of the stone. I'm going to explain who is it attributed for and why in some of the cases and what is the remedy of every stone. Okay? So the first stone that I'm going to start to speak about, it's called Odem. Odem, in English, that stone called Ruby. The stone that called Ruby been attributed to the tribe of Ruven, okay? And the color of that stone is red, 
And the main reason for it that it's red, we all know that Ruven brought his mother the flower, the mandrix flower, if you remember. And the color of those mandrix, they're usually red, okay? And when he brought it to his mother Lea, and that's why they call it Odem, okay? What is the remedy of the ruby, the stone, the precious stone that's called ruby? So people explain that ruby have very special remedies, special energy. A woman that wear it, listen to that. She cannot have, it will help to avoid miscarriage. A woman that have difficulty to deliver the kids, that stone, the energy of that stone will help her to deliver much easier, with much easier to deliver strong. Also, the energy of the stone of the ruby will help women that have difficulty falling pregnant to fall pregnant easier. Said Rabenu Bahaye that the energy of that stone came from who? We explain from the stone of Ruby. Why? Because when Ruven given it to his mother, remember, and with that, uh, Lea gone to Yaakov Avinu. The second stone that I'm going to speak that was in a Hoshen on a Ford on a breastplate of the Kohen Gadol, it's called a uh, Pedeta. What does it mean in English? In English, you call it Jade. That's the stone of Jade. And that attributed to the tribe of Shimon. Why Dafka Shimon? First of all, let's explain the color. The color of the jade is usually green, okay? Though this stone can be found usually in Arzot Kush, the Rabbeinu Behaya say Arzot Kush, it means in Africa, in the land, in a, in a, in a, a country of a, a Africa, explain Rabbeinu Behaya, in a continent of Africa. And why is it been attributed to Shimon Dafka? Why Dafka the Jade been given to the tribe of Shimon? So the Mefarshim explained that the main reason is, is to mellow people physical desire. And the remedy of that stone is that people that have a lot of energy is to mellow them down, to mellow the physical desire, okay? And not only that, that it's helps people from suffering, people sick or that. If a person carry it on his body, it will help to avoid fever. There's a special energy on that stone to avoid fever. Why dafkashim on, we have to understand, that Hazal put the stone of jade in the tribe of Shimon. We know that from the tribe of Shimon, it was Zimri ben Salu. Zimri ben Salu was the head of the tribe during the time that they left Egypt. And he, when they, just before the inter Eret Israel, when they crossed the, the land of Moab, the Moabite woman being came and tried to offer themselves to Bnei Israel, And we know that the tribe of Shimon sinned with immorality. So therefore, as I'll say, Dafka, they should wear the stone of jade. Okay, Dafka, they should wear that stone that called jade. Because one of the remedy of that stone is to help a person to mellow himself from physical um, desire to avoid or to reduce the physical desire. That's the right word. The third word, the third stone that was on the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol, it's called Bareket. Bareket is what you call it in English, emerald. Okay. And that's been attributed to the tribe of Levi. Why after the tribe of Levi? Okay. When I say the tribe of Levi, Rabota, it's include the Kohanim because the Kohanim came from the tribe of Levi. 
אוקיי? סו, סה רבנו בחייה, לפי שהיא מאירה, ובני לוי היו מאירים בתורה. What is it mean? What's one of the special thing about that stone? That stone is very shiny. And because the tribe of Levi, they're very scholar person. When it's come to Torah, they're shining the Torah. They have that ability to shine the Torah. Therefore, because that stone is so shiny, and the tribe of Levi shining the eyes of the Jewish people in Torah, that's the main reason that they given him Dafka, that stone that called the Emerald. I saw that it's brought by the Mefarshim that that stone that called Emerald, originally Noah, when he got into the Teva, he put on the top of the Teva a stone that called Emerald, And that helped to light the entire Teva for the 12 months that he was in the Teva during the time of the flood. What is the remedy of that stone? Listen to that. That's very, very, very important. The Mephashim explained when you take emerald and you actually grind it and crush it very, uh, very fine, okay? And you mix it with food, you mix it with water. It's help a person to become more wise, number one. Not only that, it's open his mind and his heart, okay? It's help also if a person carry it on his body. That means that the stone touching any part of the body doesn't make a different well to have a good dream, okay? For success in business and it's help what with the sickness that call epilepsy a person that wear it okay it will help them to reduce okay the amount of strike of the epilepsy that you have that's the stone for the levy if you are if you understand me and that's called the emerald okay the fourth stone that was on a, a breastplate it's called nofah What it means, Nofach, that was the fourth stone, and that's attributed to the tribe of Yehuda. Nofach, it's turquoise, the stone that's called turquoise. The color of the turquoise, it's usually green and blue, bluish greeny or greenish blue. The remedy of that stone, okay, that a person that carry it on his body, when I say carry it on his body, it's have to touch the skin, it's have to touch the flesh. Okay, it's avoiding negative thought, number one. Help for the strength of the heart, to strengthen the heart, to strengthen the brain, okay? And it's um, helping to the, that enemy, if person have any enemy, to have a fear from him, believe it or not. And uh, in Judaism, also in Islam, in the religious of the Islam, We believe that that stone that the person carried is again the evil eyes. And that's why the color is greenish blue. And that's what you see usually that people make the khamsa, the hand, you know, that's called the khamsa with the blue, that awards that. So that's called what we call the turquoise, this color of the turquoise, and that was awards the tribe, attribute to the tribe of Yehuda. The fifth stone is Sapir. Sapir is a sapphire, and that's been attributed to the tribe of Issachar or Issachar. Some people say Issachar, some people say Issachar, doesn't make a difference. The color of that stone, it's a baby blue. Okay, and it's represent for humility and humbleness. What is the remedy of that stone? Number one, the Mephalshim explained that it's help to strengthen the eyesight. Not only that, it's avoid that stone help to avoid any pain in the body, any swelling in any part of the body. A person that carry that stone on himself If he have any swelling or his eyesight is weak, that will help him to string it and to reduce swelling. Not only that, Hazal say 
that one of the other remedy that that stone had, that if people suffering from sweat, it will reduce his sweat. That's the energy of what we call the sefa. The sixth stone that was on a breastplate, it was diamond, yahalom. And that's the sixth stone, and that stone being attributed to the tribe of Zvulun. Okay, the color of the diamond, most of the diamond, the color is white. Honda is all different colors, but most of the diamond are white. And Hazal explained why Dafka to Zvulun, they chose the stone that called diamond, that precious stone. So Hazal explained because Zvulun, Lehof Yamin Shkon, that means Zvulun was a businessman and he used to sell and he used to bring. And a person from the tribe of Zvulun always going to succeed in a business of diamond. That means if he's a diamond businessman, if he work on a diamond uh, exchange, he will do very well. Hazal explained why. Because that stone been specially been given to that tribe because he used to do business the tribe of Zvulun and we know that the Zvulun used to support who the tribe of Issachar his brother that Issachar show wisdom because they used to sit and study Torah and they have a deal between them that Zvulun will work obviously he study but he will go to work and he will pay Issachar to study and that's what we call today Issachar Vizvulun. That means the one tribe supported the other tribe in honor that he will study for Zvulun. Also that the merit of studying Torah also will stand for Zvulun. What is the remedy of the stone that's called diamond? What's hiding behind it? What's the energy behind it? So number one, it's help for people that suffering, that battling to sleep at night. If they take a diamond and the diamond touch again, the body, it have to touch the body. It doesn't make a difference where, I'm just showing it on my palm of my hand because that's the closer one. But as long that the diamond touch the body, okay, people can sleep very well, okay? Also, it's help that if people go to war, to win a war, not only that, it's helped to people not to feel the press. The energy of that stone, not only that, that people that carry that stone, it's to avoid horrible, to avoid horrible with people, to avoid mahlokit. So the energy of the stone that's called diamond, it's actually good for many things. I repeat it again, sleeping, a person that have problem with sleeping, number one. And not only that, to win his enemies with every different kind of problem that he have with his enemies, not only physical, also if a person have a, a court case and et cetera, okay, if you wear it on his body, that will help to avoid mahlokit, People should not argue. And the most important thing is depression. That's the energy of that stone. I would like to move to the seventh stone. The seventh stone, it's called Leshem. Okay, what is Leshem? Leshem is what you call it in English, Ember or Topaz, 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 whatever. The seventh stone being attributed to the tribe of Dan. Okay, why does Kadan been chosen to have the stone that called Ember? Listen to that carefully, and you will understand that. What I'm going to bring now, it's a Midrash Talpiyot. Okay, the Midrash Talpiyot say that if you look at the stone that called Ember or Topaz, you'll see that the matter of fact, the reason that the shape of a face of a human being, that his face is upside down. Why, what is it, what does that have to do with the tribe of Dan? What's the connection? Say the Midrash Talpiot, because from the tribe of Dan was Micha, Pesel Micha. What does it mean, Pesel Micha? 
Mikha was one of those babies that Moshe Rabbeinu took out, okay, from the motor, because when Bnei Israel, <coughs> sorry, when Bnei Israel <coughs> didn't manage to make enough bricks, okay, for Pharaoh in the city of Pitom and Ramses, they used to put babies alive into the motor instead of bricks. And when Moshe Rabbeinu saw that, that he's a baby, he took Micha. I mean, why they call him Micha? Mishum shenit machmech babinyad, Hazal explained. That means that he'd been squashed, okay, amongst the building, amongst the bricks. And that Micha have idol that later on when he grown up, when Bene Israel left Egypt, when the grow, when the cross, the sea of reeds, he carried a statue. And he turned life upside down. What it mean life upside down? Instead of believing in the Almighty in Akadosh Baruch, Hu, he believed in idols. Hazal say that that stone that called Ember always will have on it a face of a human being upside down because from the tribe of Dan, they turn it. That means they turn the most important and they follow after idol worshiping. What is the remedy of that stone? There's quite a bit of remedy. According to Rabbeinu Behaya, listen to that. Rabbeinu Behaya said that stone have no remedy. That means the stone of ember have no energy, no remedy. It's a stone that was on a breastplate. Ado, ado, other mefarshim, other commentators say that the matter of fact that the stone of ember, it's very good for the strength of the heart, help to help people that keep themselves healthy. Not only that, to keep the eyes, to keep the, the eyesight properly, to look properly, that the person can have a good eyesight and help a person to be happy. That means it's, it's help a person to become all the time, to keep himself all the time in happiness, opposite from depression. So we see from here that according to the Mephashim, there's two different opinions. According to Rabbeinu Behaya, this stone have no energy, no remedy, Nothing. It doesn't can help a person that carries it. At all, the others say that not. It's good for the eyesight, number one. It's help the heart, a person that carries it. It will shrink his heart, and it will help a person to encourage him to be in happiness. That's according to the other Mefarshim. What is the energy of the stone that called ember or topaz, whatever you want to call it. The eighth stone that was in the breastplate of the Kohen Kadol, it's called Shavu. Okay, that's what we call a gate. That's the English name for that stone, a gate. That was the eighth stone. And that's been attributed to the tribe of Naphtali. What is the remedy of that stone? So according to Rabbeinu Behaya, that stone actually protect the person, believe it or not, from lightning. Not only that, from any uh, uh, pandemic. Person that if there is any pandemic, like we have last year and the year before with the corona, the stone of the gate, the person that carry it can help from that. Have a special remedy, a special energy. Not only that, it's help people that suffering or battling to fall asleep. It will help them to fall asleep. Not only that, strength the heart. There's a lot of special energy about it, about the heart. Also help a person that needs parnasa. Parnasa is wealth, okay? Also, Hazal explained that if a person got injured and he carried that stone, listen to that now, listen to that. A person that got injured and he carried that stone, that stone suddenly start to reduce her light. 
is a special light on that stone. And that stone, okay, a gate start reducing a light and helping a person to heal. The ninth stone that was on a breastplate, it's called Ahlamma. Okay, it's the, what we call it the uh, amethyst. Amethyst, that's the, the English name. That's attributed to the tribe of Gad, amethyst. Amethyst doesn't have special thing about it, that why Dafka for Gad, what's the reason behind it? But she have quite uh, a lot of remedy, a lot of energy on that stone. A person that carry it in his body, it's actually give him a lot of self-confidence. If a person need a lot of self-confidence, he should buy that stone and put it on his body to touch his body wherever is it. Also, it's helped to strengthen the eyesight. Okay, especially amongst the old people, not the young people, amongst the old people. It's helped to reduce worry, to avoid having bad dream. Okay, but, but that stone also have a negative energy. The man said the Rabbeinu Behayeh. The negative energy that there is in that stone, the same like it's give a lot of self-confidence, it's actually help a person that carry it, it to encourage, to have an argument, to have a rebuild, you know what I'm saying? So there is good in that stone that's called the amethyst. From the other way, there's also bad energy that can help a person, to encourage a person to have a lot of argument. That means a person that carry it on his body, maybe it's good for self-confidence, but that will lead also to argument. The thin stone that was in the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol that he used to carry, it's called the aquamarine or the barrel. That's the English name. That's attributed to the tribe of Asher. The color of that stone is baby blue. Baby blue, that's a color. The remedy that that stone held, that it's a matter of fact that people that suffering from digestion or people that have suffering from asthma, a person that carry it on his body, it will help for people that suffering from asthma, uh, people that have fever, to avoid fever, to digest the food, it's helped a lot with the digestion system. Not only that, it's reduced the feeling of fear, help a lot for people to understand what they're studying and also to find favor in the eyes of other people. That's me that if you look at the aquamarine or what it's called, the other name for it, it's barrel, that stone actually have a lot of good energy, a lot of good remedy that number one, help to digest food. Number two, people that suffering from asthma, it gives them a different energy that they can breathe easily, can breathe easily, help with success, okay? To find favor in the eyes of other people, reduce the feeling of fear, okay? And helping for people to understand what they're studying for wisdom, to become wisdom. The 11th stone that was <clears throat> in the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol, it's called Shoham. Shoham, that stone that's called Shoham, listen to that, it's called the Onyx. That's the English name, Onyx, okay? And it's been attributed to the tribe of Yosef. Funny enough, to the tribe of Yosef. Hazal said that the color of that stone is a black. The color of that stone is a black. And Hazal said that also it's good for Ainara, for evil, the evil eye. The remedy of that stone that called the onyx. Hazal said that it improved the memory of a person. Okay, strength the eyesight of a, a person, 
avoid epilepsy attack, number three, help to find favor in the eyes of others. And a person that carry it on his body, it's actually make them, whatever he said, people listen to him. That means that it's given him kind of uh, authority that the person that carry that stone on his body, people will listen to him. That's the 11th stone. What was the 12th stone? The 12th stone called Yeshveh. That's the 12th stone that was in the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol. Yeshveh, in English, you call it opal, okay, or jasper. That's the English name for that stone. And it's been attributed to the tribe of Binyamin. Okay, the color of that stone, it's multicolor. It's the color of the rainbow. It's a multicolor. That means opal or jasper have multicolor and it's in the color of the rainbow, explaining Hazal. What is the remedy of that stone? Listen to that. It's, it's good for people that suffering from bleeding, people that have bleeding, suffering from bleeding, that will help to stop bleeding, help people that suffering from uh, hemorrhoids. Not only that, it's helped to strengthen the uh, intestine of a person that's suffering from it. A, a people that carry it on his body explain that Sarah ben that that person that carry it, actually people will honor him. That's the remedy of that stone. So we see that from what Rabbeinu Behaya teach us, that precious stone, James stone, whatever you want to call it, uh, 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 all different kind of, um, uh, uh, of crystals that some people call them crystal, they don't call them stone, whatever the case is, Hazal explained that that stone, all those 12 stone, they are, have special energy special, okay, energy, special remedy. Now, we have to understand that today, I, I, need, I need to say it, I might go now, I don't know who's dealing with stone here on the show, but you have to understand today because <clears throat> those stone that if you wanna buy it, don't buy it from every <laughs> person go to a proper people that deal with gemstone, people that they trustworthy, because sometimes they sell you fake, the same like they sell fake diamond, they can sell any fake of those stone, any, any one of those 12 stone. So those stone, if you really want to get the maximum energy from them, the maximum remedy from them, you have to buy the original. Number two, that stone has to touch the body, okay? If it doesn't touch the body, it doesn't have effect. The energy that go through the stone to affect the body have to touch each other. And um, I mean, today, no, I will tell you, I will tell you, because you don't know the person, so I can say. One of our students, you all know him, you all know him, uh, his wife, battle to have kids for many years and he came to me seven years ago six years ago and he said to me that his wife battling battling to fall pregnant number one and if she fall pregnant she have a miscarriage so we have a chat and i said to him i think that the first thing that you have to do is daven okay but the second thing, I want you to make a ring. Make a ring, normal, like a wedding ring, drill it. I explained to the jeweler what to do. And he got, and he gone, and he bought the stone that uh, we mentioned that called ruby. That stone that called ruby. And Baruch Hashem, his wife has three kids. They're all healthy. She never have a miscarriage. And Baruch Hashem, they're all well. They're doing well. So we see from here that number one, there is, there is on those stones a lot of good energy. 
הרב שטיינמן, זכר צדיק וקדוש לברכה, when people used to come to his wife, for people that used to battle to fall pregnant, she used to have stone in her hand. And הרב שטיינמן didn't agree just given the stone. He said to her, tell him to daven to Hashem, because it's all in the hand of Hashem. So people will daven to Hashem. And before she given those rubies to those women that battled or had a lot of miscarriage, she said to them, I'm going to give you the stone. But my husband said that you must dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and that's the most important. And that's what the rabbits and Steinman used to give to women that battled to fall pregnant or used to have a lot of miscarriage and they have difficulty with giving birth. So here is a, for me, I'm giving you the first source regarding the ruby, because that's the stone that I given one of our friends and it did work. It worked magnificently. Okay, but it has to be a proper ruby. It has to be done specifically in a certain way. It's not just to buy a red stone and it's work. You can't go to the Chinese market and buy a red stone and tell you it's rubies. No, definitely not. It has to be a proper ruby stone. I send them to a special jeweler that deal with James Stone and Baruch Hashem, it did work. Let's continue with the show. Okay, now we have to ask ourselves, while Benesa was in a wilderness, where did they get 12 precious stone? Where did they find those beautiful stone? Where did they find it in a wilderness? So many of the Mephashis ask that question, and where does it happen? So we have to understand that the Torah tells us in Parashat, first of all, in Sefer Shmot, Parashat Vayakhel, in uh, chapter 35, verse 27, Hazal tells us there, That's me. According to the Pshat of the Dvarim, and we will explain, that the prince of every tribe brought those precious stones to put on the breastplate that's called a Ford and Hoshim. Hazal in a Gemara in Masechet Yoma, okay, in page 75, folio 2, say if you look at the word Nesi'im, it's missing the Yud on a word. That means the letters you does not exist. Hazal say, Hazal say, that a matter of fact, it's not Nesim, it's Ananim. Ananim, it's cloud. What's happening? Hazal explained that the cloud go to Nahal Pishon. Where is Nahal Pishon? Nahal Pishon, Hazal tell us in Sefer Bereshit, Perek Bet, in Perek Bet, Psukim, Het ve'yud, if I'm not mistaken. Ken, v'nar yotzeh me'gen me'eden, ken. That means it was four river that came out of Gan Eden, okay? No, they verse 10 and 11, not 9 and 10. Okay, 11, 10 and 11, look there. Hazal, uh, the Torah tell us that was four river that came out of Gan Eden. And Nahal Pishon was one of them. And the cloud gone to Nahal Pishon, got those 12 precious stones and brought it just outside the camp of Israel, Bnei Israel, and the prince of every tribe gone outside the camp and collected and brought it when they built the table necro. That's one opinion. The other opinion that I'm gonna bring is the opinion of Rabbi Arielev Alter, Rabbi Arielev Alter, born in a city of Warsaw in Poland around 176 years ago, plus minus. He was the third Rebbe of the Gur movement. He wrote a book, Sfatemet, well known. It's a book with commentary on our Torah, on Parashat Shabbat. And he explained that, as a matter of fact, those 12 stones 
that they put in a breastplate, those was the 12 stone that Yaakov Avinu put, okay, under his head when he fell asleep in Haramoria. And those stones came from where? From Nahal Pishon. Later on, the clouds going to bring them, and inside them was those 12 precious stones that came from Nahal Pishon, that means the river of Pishon, like there is the Euphrates River, one of them. One of them is the Pishon uh, River, okay? So now that we know about those gemstone, those special, beautiful gemstone, 12 gemstone, Rabota, you have to understand that those stone does have special energy, does have a special remedy if people need them, but, you have to make sure that it's touching the body, number one. Number two, you have to make sure that you buy it from a proper gemstone dealer. That the proper stone that they give you a guarantee that they are. Um, if you need anyone, I can recommend. Um, and you need a special jeweler to do that for you because it has to touch the body. I usually recommend a ring for the woman. And the reason for it, because women wear rings, so it can be all the time on a finger, and it will touch the body all the time. That means that the flowing of the blood can get that special energy and it can start affecting a person. So there's a lot of shame that we should all merit to see the Mashiach, and the Mashiach will build Beit HaMikdash, and then we see the Kohen Gadol with a beautiful breastplate in our days, Amen, Ken Yiratson. Now I'm going to give time for question on that you would like to ask regarding those precious stones. Bechavot, those of you that want to ask, Bechavot, ask. Don't forget to unmute the microphone. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Bravo. Harav, what, uh, my, uh, my wife said, what was the purpose of the breastplate? How, what was the purpose of the breastplate? What, they, what did they do with that stone and, and the, the breastplate itself? What? Sorry, say again. What, what did is the they purpose do? of the breastplate? What was the what purpose of the breastplate? Yeah, what was the, the purpose of the breastplate? Yes. Okay. So first of all, according to the Rambam, okay, it was a square breastplate, okay? Meruba. Mm -hmm. Okay, the shape of it was square, okay? And it was 12 stone that each one of them was three tribe, three tribe, three tribe, and three tribe. That means you have four line of three, okay? When in the top is Ruven, Shimon, Levi, okay? Going upside down. Mm -hmm. And then come Yehuda and etc. You follow what I'm saying? You understand me? Sorry, yes, I hear you. Okay. What's happened with the breastplate, the Kohen Gadol? I'm not sure where is it. The, some, some of the, 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 the opinion is that mitahat lemehilot shel harabait, that it's under Okay, in the tunnels under that we don't know, because when Shlomo Melech built Bet Amigdash, he built special tunnels, because he knew that they're gonna destroy, and they hide certain things there. And today, some of them there. A lot of things from Bet Amigdash, a lot of vessels, a lot of things been taken to the Vatican, right. to the Vatican, mm -hmm. to the Vatican in Rome. And I heard a shiur two years ago, even more, by Arav Ben Tion Mutsafi. And he says that one of his students that work in a very sensitive position in Israel, that's mean in a Mossad, he was there for under the ground for at least seven, eight days that he have to do. And he said to him, there's a lot of thing been hiding there that been taken from the Jews during the second temple been taken mm -hmm. to Rome, so it's a proof. And also in the Gemara, we have a proof that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, remember the story with Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that he canceled the decree uh, against the Jews in his time, that was 
just after the destruction of the second temple. And he said in the Gemara that he saw the parochet. The parochet, it means that the curtain that the Kohen Gadol used to sprinkle the blood on it, it's in the Gemara, that he saw it in Rome in the Vatican. So it's well known that there's a lot of vessel there. Beseder, Stevie? I'm saying, but what was the question out? The question I have asked is what was the purpose of the Choshen? What, now, what was the purpose? purpose? What was the purpose? Okay. The purpose of the Hoshen is that in a, if you look at the Hoshen, let's say it's a Reuven, it's a Shimon, yeah. Levi, whatever it's mentioned, before they used to go to a war or before they used to do anything, they used to consult with the Hoshen. And according to that, when they used to look, they used to ask Akadosh Baruch Hu, and the letters, the letters used to shine. You understand yeah. me, Steve? And then yeah. you used to go to war or not to go to war. You understand? That means that the purpose of it was to ask the Almighty, okay, to ask the Holy Divine Spirit of Akadosh Baruch Hu, Let's say to go to war or not to go to war. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I it's got it. Consult directly with Almighty. Mm -hmm. that? Like the Urim and Tumim. But only the Kohen can read it because he can put the letters, the sequence of the letters properly. Not everyone. It wasn't come like, let's say, it would say Aleph, Bet, Gimel. No, it's come in all different sequence. But only mm -hmm. the Kohen Gadol that have that Ruach HaKodesh can work it out what does it mean to go to war or not to go to war. I'm just giving, giving one example. All yes, different God. things. You follow? Thank so you. That Thank you. Important. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Bechavod, Rabotai. If you want to ask any other question, Bechavod. Hi, Jeffrey. Oh, Jeffrey. Shalom Aleichem. How are you? Ruch Hashem. All good. This, um, so basically, these, these energies are basically known by many, many nations because they use stones themselves. And they use stones themselves and they, unfortunately, they glorify the stones as if the stones are giving it themselves and it's not via Hashem. And there's a lot of idolatry with the stones. So it is very, very dangerous uh, to, um, to listen to other people giving remedies on stones because they don't take the from the source, we take all our source from Hashem. And the point is Hashem has given us the, the knowledge and, the, and, and Hashem himself may have said, said we must have these stones in the breastplate. So I mean, that, 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 that clears that up from our point of view. But we got to be very careful. Indians have a certain color and they're, 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 all, they're all, all use it for Avodah And they, it's almost like astrologers, the people that in astrology that take as if the stars themselves are giving the, uh, you know, energy. giving the energy and, and the source and the power. It's not. It's, it's, a, it's been given to us by Hashem to utilize. And we are blessed that we will be able to be explained how to use it in the right, proper manner. Yeah. But That's many, so first of all, I am uh, very happy that you mention it, but I need to explain something very important. Many of the people that use stone, they put the stone and they don't even know what does it mean. If you, I've been in a, been in a few of my customers' house because I work for my living. Sure. And when I walk to people's house, I see all different stone. And uh, Quite often people see because of where they are me, they say to me, you know anything about stone? And I say, what do you mean? I don't want to tell them that I know so much, <laughs> not that I know so much. And I found out that 90% of them don't even know, don't even know what they're talking. They look mm -hmm. at it as a remedy, okay, as an emulant, and they think that it just works. Now, how do these energy on a stone? Today, 
most of the people, first of all, 90% of the stone that you find on people jewelry, I think that they're fake. Yeah. I'm telling you for a fact. Okay. Yeah. And the people that I used to recommend to go and get those stones, the special jewelers, first of all, they deal with those precious stones and everyone know them. You know, the people know well known about them in the diamond industry, in the stone industry. And number two, the people that use stone, okay, that you see them at the house, it doesn't touch the body. So the effect on the energy doesn't work. Do you understand what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yes. The same like we done show about astrology. Now on that astrology work, but today most of the people that write the horoscope and all, yeah. I no, promise you, ninety nine percent point nine nine, they don't even know what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But we have to accept that there's special energy in the world. You know, there's special stars in the heaven. Yeah. We can't deny that Akadosh Baruch created them. We can't deny special thing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The Torah tell us that was those special stone. And each stone have its own energy. Each stone have its own color and what's hiding behind it. And each tribe that got it, it was specifically to his own tribe why he got it. Like we say, for example, that the 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 the, uh, the the second stone that called the jade, okay, yeah. that been given and attributed to the tribe of um, Shimon, Shimon. Yeah. okay, there is a special energy on it. Now imagine that you take a, 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 a green stone, okay, just for example, and you put it at home. That's not going to help you. Okay, it's not going to mellow your physical desire. It's, the, it's only going to work if it's on you while your blood's running, while you're alive. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. For example, I'll give you an analogy to understand that. Okay, if you take a green stone and you put it on a body of a dead person, what energy is going to bring him? He's not that alive. Thing. It's going to affect blood. The same like you take the great, the 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 the, 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 the jade, the green stone, and you put it by the interest. What people usually do, I saw they take a like a nice big plate, and they mix all the stone together, and it's thing that's going to bring a special energy. Mm. It's not going to bring a special energy to 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 the plate, but the plate can't get effect. That stone start to work on you if it's this energy that the person can receive the energy. You understand what I'm saying? A person to absorb that energy. But if you leave it on a stone or you leave it on a table, whatever, whatever the case is, who is it going to affect? Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you understand me, Jeffrey, what I'm yes, trying? Yes, yes, yes. So um, that stone can only work if it's physically touch a human body, that's mean that the energy running on a body, you know what I'm saying? I hear you. It's like when we say, come on, that life, the life is in the blood. Yes. The life the is in, and it affects the blood. The affects the blood. The one other the thing. Life, you, you life, so how does it work? Very good question, you I just need to explain that. Yes. Because the blood, as I'll say, Adam, Adam, Aneshama, the soul is inside the blood. So when the stone touching the flesh, the body of a human being, that stone, that James stone, it starts to run the energy through the entire body because the, the blood cycle all the body. Do you understand how that work? Right yeah. through. It cycle all over the cell. Yeah. Ken, you wanted to ask another question. It was, a, it was just a, a name. Um, you gave us the names of all the, basically the Hebrew names. What is the Hebrew name for Beryl and Aquamarine? You, you told us the Beryl, Aquamarine, the baby blue color. Uh, Tarshish. Tarshish. Sorry, Tarshish. 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 
Tarshish, that was the ten stone, and that attributed to the tribe of Asher. Sorry, it was my mistake. I didn't mention Tarshish. I take it, my mistake. So remember, it's called Tarshish. Tarshish, it's a word attributed to the tribe of Asher. It's called aquamarine or beryl. Right, right, right. So um, we, the the and the other way the other last thing was um, when we spoke about was it it was Shimon, or, Shimon. Uh, Shimon when he uh, brought the the flowers to no that's Ruven 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 rather Ruven wrote to my fault my fault Ruven was that the Dudaim was that the Dudaim Dudaim Mendrik. Do the aim, do the aim. The main do the aim. Okay. Uh, that, you see, Rob, there are all these stones which you mentioned, I mean, having traveled quite a bit through Africa and what have you, there are a lot of colors. They are real uh, stones, but then they do have different colors. Just like diamond, you have brown diamond, yellow diamond, black diamonds. You you have all the different diamonds. So does it have to be that specific color of which you are mentioning now that's going to be in that color for that stone? You see, so you have to understand all of those colors that are brought. These different ideas that I brought one opinion of Rabbeinu Behaye, the opinion of Rabbeinu Behaye. We all know, for example, let's take the diamond. Diamond, the common color of the diamond is white, light. Yeah. It's a light. I wonder these other diamonds that, that you see a, a brown diamond, you see a, like. a, all different color, whatever. But the main color of that stone, of that James stone, precious stone, whatever you want to call it, crystal, whatever you want to call that stone, yeah. is mainly white. That's what represented. I wonder yeah. these other different. But if you, if you have to describe diamond in the world, 99.9% .9 of the people will tell you it's a clear white, yeah. that's the color. You, are, you understand me? Yes. Is that it? Okay. Any other question, Rabota? If you have any yeah, other question, no. don't, don't be Rabbi, shy. It's Frank. It's yes, Frank. Frank. How are you, Rabbi? How are you? How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you, Rabbi. I want yes, to ask you, a question does the size of the stone have to be a certain size or is this you know a small one or a big one does that got anything to do with the energy okay very good question very good question so i tell you from my experience from my experience and i've done that twice with the ruby stone i'm going to tell you twice i've done it with the ruby stone i mentioned one person that you all know is another person that I know it personally. I think my wife also know it. She, she also met that person. And the size of the shape of that stone doesn't make how big is it. It's long that it touched the body. So I'll explain to you what we done. We took, Frank, listen to me. We took a wedding ring. You can buy any other round wing ring. You take it to a jeweler. You have to drill holes around the ring, okay? And that stone has to fit through the hole to touch the skin of the body. And it's many, it's much more stone that you put. There's more of that energy. There's more of that remedy that touching the body. You understand? It's not the yes. size. It has to get a lot of energy. Obviously, if you take one big ruby and you put it <laughs> on your chest or you hold it in your hand all day, whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's also going to bring much more energy. But you don't need such a big thing. Okay, thank, thanks, Reba. Thank you. Okay, as long as you touch the body. Okay, thank you. Pleasure, pleasure. Any other, any other question, Robota, regarding the stone? If someone want to ask about the stone. Yeah. I think no. you explained okay. it pretty well. Okay, good, good. 
Rabotai, so again, I would like to wish all of you tomorrow is a public holiday. Enjoy your public holiday. Um, from what I understand, on a group of uh, Ward 72, we don't have any, uh, no planning of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Low shedding. Low shedding. shedding. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. And so I would like to take the opportunity to wish all of you a beautiful week, a beautiful day tomorrow. Enjoy the, another day of rest. And Be'ezrat Hashem will meet again this coming Thursday for Parashat Vayehi, and with Parashat Vayehi, we're actually going to end up the book of Sefer Bereshit on, on Thursday night. Okay, Be'ezrat Hashem, if there is no Lord Shedding. In the meantime, enjoy the week. Have a great week. Call to. Have a good night, everyone. Okay. Rav, okay. one thing, okay. uh, Rav. Yes, yeah. uh, if we starting on Shabbos afternoons with the Shurim, does that mean we're stopping on Thursday? No, 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 no. I explain. The Shurim that I give on Thursday, it's Shur that I actually take it and I go to depths to it. You remember what right. we done last Shabbos? Yes. Okay, what is I'll, it? I didn't know it was going to be the same thing. What I'm taking the Shur of the, during the week, I'm taking certain verses in the parsha, but we're going in depth, we're looking at it from the Pshat Remesh Dras Shod, but more in the depth like we done last week. You remember? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. Of the Thanks, sir. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what we were planning. Now, we're not going to stop the Zoom, Be'ezrat Hashem. Right. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to continue. We're going to continue to spread the word of Torah the word of Akadosh Baruch Hu all over the world. So Amen. thank you, yes. everyone. Thank you for joining us. All the thank best. You, thank, thank you, Rab. Thank you. Good night. Shavua Tov. Good night. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov.